everybody, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We can see your names popping up. We're delighted that you can be here. If you can, go ahead and say hello to us in chat. So when you go to the bottom of your screen, there's a menu down there and there's a little bubble that says chat. And if you click on that, you can, uh, and make sure when you do that, you use the little drop down menu that says two panelists and participants, and then everybody who's here can see you. So great to have folks here. Let us know where you're watching from. Oh, we see lots of familiar names. Hi, Andrew and Bob and Carol and Cecilia's here and Claire and many Davids. Hello to all the Davids. And Dick <laughs> Enstead, I'm so glad you're coming up for Boat Show. It's gonna be great to have you. Awesome. Harley and Norma are here in Decora. Hi. And Steven Mankato. Great, Cindy's here. Galena, Illinois. Hi, Janet, how are you? Oh, it's always really fun. The Shane Hairs are at home and they are logging, they are here, that's great. Hey everybody, if you're just arriving, we're just getting everybody into the room. Go ahead and um, say hello to us in chat. Remember to use the little drop down menu next to the two to say all panelists and attendees. Um, so everybody can see. Lots of great folks. Hi, Mandy. This is the uh, part of the, the webinar where we give a weather update on the North Shore. So I can tell you that it's a really beautiful day here. Um, the lake was super calm and the, tr the leaves are on the trees now. There are lilacs like threatening to maybe think about blooming sometime, as well as crab apple trees. Um, any other reports? on the weather, anyone would like to contribute? Come on, Minnesotans, you don't have any, any reports on the weather, it's part of what we do. Hi, Phil, it has been a very beautiful day here, hasn't it? Great, hi, Vicki. All right, well, it looks like we have lots of folks. We had well over 100 people RSVP, so we'll give it just a minute here. We're at about 75 folks. Yes, the black flies are out. If you didn't notice, they, they have emerged. They will soon be pollinating our blueberries, so we are grateful to see them in some sense, I suppose. All right, yes, I heard it was sunny and really quite warm in Minneapolis. Hi, Mary Somnus, great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Yes, and it was 20 degrees last, last week. And there were people out in the Boundary Waters, including our friend John. Quite, quite chilly. I think if you were in the Boundary Waters this weekend, you experienced all the weather. You got thunderstorms and hail and heat and rain and you name it. So here's the scoop on how this is gonna work tonight. This is a webinar format. So you'll just see the panelists um, joining us and we'll do a little quick round of introductions here. If you are watching from home, you are safely incognito behind your computer screen, so don't worry. Uh, we'll go ahead. If you, um, you still have the ability to control the view that you see, so in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you can select the gallery view or the speaker view, which will allow you to see um, what you would like to see on your screen. And yeah, you also have some other options. Down at the bottom of your screen, there is something called Q&A which is a great place to put any questions you might have uh, because that way we don't lose track of them. Sometimes that chat uh, moves really fast. And so Q&A is a great spot. If you have a question that you wanna make sure that we get to, please put them there. Please go ahead and use that chat function if you just wanna add some commentary or say hello. Um, and certainly questions can go there too. Um, and we'll be tracking that and, and uh, keeping, keeping an eye on that to make sure that we uh, get to everybody's questions and uh, yeah. I think with that, I'm gonna turn things over here. Who is gonna take the reins? I think we're about ready to get started. We're so glad you're all here. All right, that's me. All right. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, appreciate you all joining us tonight. It's a, it's a lovely night in Grand Marais, as we said before, and finally acting like summer. Um, I'm Mike Prom. I'm actually the president of the North House Board. Um, I've lived in Grand Marais for almost 30 years, and this is my fifth, going on my fifth year on the board. So I approached Greg one time with a couple of ideas for North House, and here I am. That's how that works. So 
Um, this is our second uh, online meeting. Um, so hopefully it'll go smoothly. Our resources are online at the North House homepage. So just go to the homepage if you'd like to, um, if you'd like to get those resources. Um, and, and I'm the first person, I've said this in many board meetings that, that think that Zoom meetings are hard, but this is a great way for us to keep connected and we've been able to do it. And it was a successful meeting last year. Um, and we've learned a lot in how to do online meetings and how to do online classes and so forth. Um, and so I think that's a blessing. And so we'll use that tonight. Um, the past year, wow. <laughs> I remember sitting here last year at this time saying, I wonder what the future uh, of North House is and, and what the next year is gonna look like. And I just think it's, it's underscored by um, perhaps how strong North House is in its community and, and the community of North House um, and how resilient and dynamic um, it is and, how, and what kind of depth and strength it has. And so I just think that um, a lot of times at the meeting, it's for looking backwards where we've been and where we're going, but I think it's really important to realize how great that is. Um, there's been a ton of creativity um, if you can even add more creativity to North House, it happened this year, and I didn't even know that was humanly possible. So I think that's fantastic. Uh, I want to thank the donors, volunteers, students, instructors for their involvement. Um, and I want to acknowledge um, all of the individuals and families uh, and, and organizations that, uh, that have, have donated and supported uh, North House. There is a list in the packet of five, 10, 15, and yes, we finally are 20 plus year people that have supported us. So I think that's wonderful. Um, it's super inspiring. I'm involved in a couple other nonprofits and to see that, and I know I've talked to Tom about it, and I think he would say that's healthy to have that full span of people that are passionate and enthusiastic about it to support it that many years in a row and also at all different levels. So I think it's a sign of a very uh, healthy organization. So that's wonderful. And I'd also like to, to thank um, the staff. I mean, Greg is the leader. What a great, I mean, what a stressful, challenging year. Anytime you have change, um, it's stressful, uh, challenging, and good job. The lead staff, um, all of the full-time and part-time staff, and of course, the interns and, and the a, uh, ADP folks. So thank you very, very much. Um, just a, a couple of announcements. Obviously, we're looking forward, and I hope that the next time we see you, it may be in person, but again, we've learned from this. And so there's gonna be opportunities to see you in person on campus, as well as to continue to follow us um, with other methods, meaning, you know, meaning online. Um, we've got the Wooden Boat Show coming up uh, online throughout June, as well as on campus, June 17th, 18th and 19th. And then Unplugged, we're, we're starting the details of Unplugged. Um, and so I think that'll be a hybrid as well. So keep looking for that information, um, but just kind of a sneak peek or preview, um, uh, kind of featuring uh, Jay Blades who created the BBC's uh, Fame the Repair Shop um, and also uh, uh, Amethyst uh, Kie, I think I'm saying that right, um, who was recently featured in the Rolling Stone. So both online opportunities as well as in person so kind of stay in tune for that as those details come out. I think with that, I will give it to Greg for your in a review. Great, thanks, Mike. Um, I think everybody knows, you know, how critical great leaders are to organizations and want to thank and recognize Mike for his leadership this past year and uh, and the collaboration is, you know, keeping, keeping the board working hard as, as they did. Uh, what a difference that made um, for North House Folk School. So if I haven't met you, I'm, my name is Greg Wright. I'm the director of North House. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here. Yeah, what a difference, what a, difference a year makes. And not that the challenges are all gone, but um, I can still remember a meeting in August and seeing so many, many of the names here, but, but other names as well. And, and we we're all wondering, you know, what, what's going on? And it's interesting to reflect back, look back a little bit, as, even as, as we kind of look forward right now you know, 2018, 2019, these are our two strongest years in our history as a school, programmatically, and, and in a lot of other ways, too. Um, we um, have grown literally every year of our existence, except for two. Students are knocking on our door saying, I want to get my hands on craft. I want to be part of this community. I want to um, experience lifelong hands-on learning. I want to learn the story of the North. And um, people 
wanted to come. And, and suddenly, and actually January and February of 2020 were the busiest January and the busiest February in our history. Um, in March, that's the way it started. And wow, everything changed. You know, in what words, oh, wow, what words do you use to describe it? You know, um, lots of words. Canceling classes, canceling more and more classes. If you run a folk school, I mean, that breaks your heart. Um, um, challenges, um, twists, turns, unexpected, or I think uh, some of our favorite words, pivots. <laughs> pivots again and again and again. Um, you know, but, but what um, I, th I think Mark might captured the idea, you know, um, you know, inside every challenge is an opportunity um, and creativity is the key, thinking about what we can do as opposed to what, what we can't. And, um, you know, so many examples of how North House in this past year kept moving forward. Um, crafting in place, our digital program series, you know, actually, if you count those participants, 2020 was our busiest year ever. Um, it's not really the way we've measured us before, but yeah. Um, Highway 61 construction project, you know, doesn't matter if there's a pandemic, the construction trucks are coming, we need to get ready. Uh, a new east entrance to campus, um, we need to get ready. Um, unexpected twisting and turns, did, um, were, did we have interns on campus? We did, we have artisan development program underway, we did. How do we make these experience still high quality, still life impacting? Um, and what, what I, I relished is also the staff and the board making, you know, really informed, purposeful decisions. Um, the school um, is strong still. Donors made it clear that um, they want North House to continue to move forward. And indeed, they want to see new projects emerge, projects um, like a growing scholarship program, projects like uh, our spotlight on indigenous craft. So others are gonna talk about some of that, but I wanna say on behalf of um, myself, thanks to everybody for being part of North House and for your belief in our mission and your support of our efforts. And um, now it's my pleasure to hand the uh, microphone off to Tina Hag rawway who is our treasurer and another fantastic board member. Hi everyone, I'm Tina Hag rawway I grew up here in Grand Marais and uh, my, moved my family back here uh, maybe six years ago. And uh, I'm really pleased to be involved with the community and especially with North House. Um, I remember when there were the first, uh, you know, social celebrations and chowder feeds and uh, canoe building and figure framing and things like that. And uh, I am the treasurer of the board. And so I'll be giving the financial report um, there's a complete financial summary which includes a comparison between 2020 and 2019, that's the package. There's also plenty of key observations I encourage you to review in there. Uh, most importantly, we're very pleased to report that in spite of the many challenges of the past year, North House ended 2020 in the black without using any of our emergency reserves and without you losing any of our staff. So that was unexpected back in March, April, those days. Um, and we're very pleased with the results of 2020. Um, there's a lot of reasons for it, that, um, but three deserve to be highlighted. First, the collaboration and planning initiated by the finance committee and the board and the staff was really exceptional and demonstrated the financial discipline that North House has developed. The creativity and flexibility of the whole team was a critical success factor. It laid the foundation for navigating all of the storms that 2020 brought. The second thing is that um, we paid careful attention to managing our operations and expenses. Plus, uh, there was a willingness to make tough decisions that kept the year balanced. Program revenue decreased really dramatically due to what ended up being about four months of course cancellations. Um, and decreased capacity as well. But the team was able to reduce the expenses, find alternate revenue sources, new programming, and that helped keep the balance that we needed. Uh, we were able to take advantage of Minnesota's shared work program, the federal paycheck protection program, or the PPP loans um, and grants, 
and there were emergency grants from different sources. Those allowed us to continue operations in a fiscally responsible manner. So we shifted our capital project plans around, the equipment investment plan changed, um, there were some just some marketing strategy. That was just a few of the flexible adjustments that reflected the year's changing priorities. Um, Third, and this is a really big one, the generosity of donors and the strength of our foundation partners truly made the difference between surviving and thriving in 2020. Our financial modeling for 2020 included an assumption that revenue from all sources would decrease, but instead donors made it clear how they felt about our health. We actually set new records for the total number of donors, new record for the total new donors and new records for total giving for the year, equating to a 25% increase over the prior year. So that is absolutely incredible support. And that is what allows us to build momentum as the pandemic's impact is diminishing in 2021. Throughout the whole time, we've prioritized keeping the North House staff team together because they're completely key to our current stability and our future growth. We entered the year with all of our current staff working full time, and now we're undergoing a search to fill some key positions that are open. Um, in addition, we haven't lost sight of the priorities and the dreams. Um, there's a strong start to 21 underway, um, and we were able to hold more classes than we planned for. And it's exciting to see the efforts include some of the key priorities, like launching the new spotlight on indigenous crafts, uh, one of my personal favorite connections to the community, and dramatically improving our scholarship and accessibility programs which is another financial adventure that's really exciting. So we look forward to moving ahead with you this year, uh, fiscally and craft-wise, and we just thank you very much for your support so far. It's an incredible year. We, we never expected this level of success in 2020. Thanks, Tina. And I think I'm next uh, to share a little bit about development, but. Tina shared most of my numbers, um, which were all really positive and it was really fun um, to keep connecting with donors. And I felt really privileged to have the work of reaching out to people throughout the course of last year and to continue hearing the ways in which people were staying engaged with North House. And so it's fun to see it on the program side and it's fun to see the ways in which people uh, engage in North House and invest in programs they believe in. Uh, donor support last year was absolutely critical, and it remains critical to really maintaining the momentum we built during 2020 if we're going to keep moving forward with purpose and keep celebrating the mission and story of North House. Uh, you won't be surprised, as development director, I'll share that the spring appeal or summer appeal as it might be, uh, is going to be coming your way here pretty soon, and I hope you'll give it consideration as to how you'd like to be involved in investing in North House this year to continue making North House more accessible and to keep our programming vibrant. Um, donor support powers so many things and the impact of your support last year was absolutely incredi incredible. Um, you gave folks the opportunity to continue learning and growing at a time when so much of life was on pause. That was tremendous. And we heard from people over and over again what a difference that made in their lives. You gave folks the opportunity to build new connections and relationships and friendships with people around the world through online programming in a time of huge isolation, and that shouldn't be overlooked. And even simple things like providing craft kits to every kid in Cook County, when everything was moving to screens, you gave them a chance to learn with their hands. Uh, my daughter's in kindergarten here. She got, to, <laughs> she got to participate. Tina's son is in school here. Uh, Mike's kids have been in school here. Uh, as part of North House, we get to see the ways those things come back. And we can't thank you enough for helping to make that kind of thing possible. Without you, classrooms would have been locked and the lights would have been off. And that's an image I can barely stand to even think about. But instead, there's a community that's more resilient, more connected, and more engaged than ever. So thank you so much for being part of this community. and for being part of the story. I continue to be humbled by the ways in which people believe in the power of craft. And I'll turn it over to Jessa. Thanks, Tom. 
Yeah, it, there's not a lot left to be said about what 2020 was like for all of us. Um, it, from a programming perspective, it was heartbreaking and also incredibly um, exhilarating and creative as we moved as quickly as we could to uh, try to figure out what was possible and what, uh, what fulfilling our mission of building community and um, enriching lives looks like in the Zoom era. And thanks to the incredible support of the donor community and also our, our amazingly talented and resilient instructor community and staff, uh, we have a pretty good idea that you can actually enrich lives and build community via Zoom. Um, we, as has been highlighted, we launched a bunch of different online um, digital engagement efforts. And one of the things that I'm really pleased to report is that many aspects of that programming will go with forward with us. We have received so much positive feedback about our webinar series, creatively titled Crafting in Place, which uh, will remind us of where it came from, um, but that's been an opportunity to um, not quite every Thursday, but most Thursdays, uh, tune in to Zoom to join up with a community of folks who are learning about um, wilderness paddling to Hudson Bay, that's on this Thursday actually, or um, but hear from Bob Jansen, one of the uh, foremost bird experts in Minnesota, or connect over lunch with Svetlana Koroneva, a Russian birch bark weaver, or join up with Harley and Norma Refsal in their living room to look at some of their favorite um, pieces of craft from Norway. And it's that series has really had a positive impact on people and we intend to continue offering those opportunities for people to connect with each other and with North House and for us to be able to scour the corners of the globe to tell stories from folks that we might not otherwise be able to bring to campus and certainly not all in one year. So that um, is one of those uh, pieces that we'll carry forward with us. We also launched a variety of uh, formats of online uh, coursework that's tuition based, which was part of the bottom line in this last year and will continue with us in some format. We are going to spend some time refining what those offerings look like so that we ensure a really high quality educational experience for our students, the kind of experience we want people to have. Uh, whether they're sitting next to the lake or sitting next to their laptop. We have a lot of instructors who are really excited about those options and will uh, continue to, uh, as I said, refine what we offer and when we offer it. So we're always curious to hear what you'd like, but we anticipate that in some format that will continue with us as well. On campus, we are so happy to have students back and instructors back and lots of noise on campus that is uh, being generated by people building things. And uh, basically every month now we'll be adding an additional classroom space. So starting around July 4th, we'll uh, reopen the blacksmith shop, which will be really exciting. And by September, we'll have the kitchen back online and we just expect that we'll continue to click forward um, in our classroom spaces, as well as um, go back to the more diverse curriculum offerings that we've had in the past. Um, many classes are tricky to do with social distancing uh, because there are just some stages where the instructors has got to be working over your shoulder. And so we're uh, be able to add those back in as well as, uh, as it becomes safer for people to gather together. So that's really exciting. Um, we also are uh, launching back into many of the additional programs that don't appear in the catalog, but are vital to the functioning of the school and our connection to the community. We're busy planning our kids' summer camps. They're all full. We're looking ahead towards school field trips again, as well as instructor residencies and after school clubs and public programs and all the other things that make campus part hum in the way that we all love that uh, paused, but are going to be joining up with us again. And for now, we are very much hoping that come winter's gathering of 2021, we're all squashed together in the red building again, and um, that we are able to figure out how to share those things as well online. So figuring out how online things and on-campus things uh, connect is gonna be part of the challenge going forward, but we're excited to do that work. I think I'm gonna turn it over here. That's my report on programming. All right, that's back to me, thank you. 
So we've got a little bit of business to do. I'm just going to explain how that's going to work via Zoom so that we can do that. Um, it will, if we do a motion, feel free to make a motion in your chat. Uh, Jessa will let us know when we have the first two. My guess is everybody will be involved and we'll get several. So the first two on the list will be our motion and our second. And then um, she will send out a poll that will um, have our vote uh, so that you can either the vote yay, nay, or abstain. Um, so that's how that'll work. And when those results are in, then we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, announce that the, that the vote either carried or didn't. So the first thing in your packet was our 2020 annual meeting uh, minutes. And so I'd be looking for a motion um, uh, to accept the minutes of the 2020 meeting. Andrew Holton has moved that. Thanks, Andrew. We're looking for a second then, I think. And Jane seconds. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, difficult for discussion, but it's just minutes, so I think we're okay. Um, so all in favor say aye, or I guess check the poll aye, nay, and abstain. So do it, go ahead and do your, uh, your vote. I'm watching it happen before my very eyes. And I think I'll keep moving along and then you can just let us know when that works, if, if that works for I you. I think we're there, Mike. We're at 62 ayes, no nays, and Okay, the me. motion carries, thank you. Um, the next thing is uh, will be uh, our new board members, but I'd like to just spend a second thanking um, our board. It was a challenging year. And while, I mean, I, I am honored and humbled to be a part of that board and, and to lead it. Some days I'm like, oh my gosh, does anybody know who I am? I can't believe I'm leading this thing. We've got people that are, um, are uh, you know, CFOs of, of, of universities to attorneys to successful business people to vice presidents of major corporations and all of these things. Um, and, and, and also have a whole bunch of experience on nonprofit boards. And I just think um, we are so lucky as an organization to have um, such a strong board. And, I, and I'll, I just want to say the names of the people that are leaving us. Um, and that's to put a little pressure on the new people coming in because there's some big shoes to fill. So um, I just want to thank Nancy Burns, um, who, um, who was our past board uh, chair president, um, Andrew Holton, Mary Morrison, uh, Mark Glasnap, and Paul Azlanian. So all of those um, have worked hard with the rest of the board this year. Um, lots of discussions. Everybody is super passionate and takes ownership. Um, we have lots of votes that are not unanimous. So that means that everybody cares and is, is putting in their two cents. And I think that's a sign of a, a very strong and healthy board. Um, um, so just the, the profiles for the people that are, um, that the slate of officers that our nominating committee came up with are in your packet. Um, we have some new members as well as a second, some second and third term members as well. Um, so uh, what I would do is entertain a motion uh, to accept the slate of, of board members. Um, Claire um, Nazlanian, uh, Carrie Wengner and Cecilia Schiller are be three people that would be new on the board. Um, Terry Cermak and Randy Schnobrick would be their second term and Todd Mestead would be uh, on his third term. So that is the slate of, of board members that we're voting on. So we'd need a motion and a second. Looks like we have a motion from Carol Wintermike and okay. Jane Alexander seconds. Wonderful. And then again, we'll put the poll up to vote. If you can vote yay, nay, or abstain, please. Poll coming. Whoops, sorry. Poll number two. We'll just give that a second. That happened fast last time, so we can. I think based on math, uh, with 62 in favor and no one opposed and for abstaining, you can so make the Frost is prepared to call it. All right, there's enough math, wonderful. <laughs> All right, so the motion carries. Um, I think with that, that concludes the business uh, portion. Um, we do have a Q&A time and um, 
Tom, are you facilitating that? I believe I am. All right, wonderful. And the, so there is a Q&A at the bottom of your screen. You can type questions in there. That helps me keep track of them. Uh, people have also been messaging them to me and finding other creative ways. I think I have an email. We'll get to all of them as best we can. Uh, but the first question I think is probably um, for Matt to answer, how are construction projects on Highway 61 impacting campus? What's the timeline? How does campus work? Yeah, so if, if anybody has not been in Grand Marais right now, um, there's kind of a gaping hole in front of North House Folk School uh, where there once was a highway. And so this has been in the works for years. Um, you know, we've been anticipating it for at least three plus four years, maybe. I don't know. Um, certainly we've been talking about it for that long. Um, but they're just, yeah, they're redoing the whole corridor as it goes through Grand Marais, Mendot is. And uh, yeah, they certainly broke ground. Um, there is only eastbound traffic uh, in front of North House right now. So if you go to Bucks, you have to come back to North House via, you know, First Avenue. Um, so those of us who go to Bucks at least once a day, that does provide kind of a, it's, it's a big headache. But I will say that uh, the flip side is the, the end result is going to be really beautiful. You know, they're going to have bump outs. Um, They've already put fire hydrants in, so you can kind of get a sense for the, the walking path and the bike path is going to extend out into the Highway 61. I think it's really going to improve uh, sort of uh, pedestrian access and around North House, um, specifically on the restaurants. So, yeah, uh, they're slated to be done by uh, September, October, and they actually got an early start this year because of the kind of the early spring. So we're, yeah, they're on track. Um, did that answer that question, Tom? Are you satisfied? I am. Um, and it looks like we have a couple people that are raising their hands. And sometimes people raise their hands because they want to ask a question. And sometimes they hit the wrong button on Zoom and they don't know how to undo it. So if you're raising your hand, go ahead and send me a message in chat. And I'll know that you actually want me to call on you. <laughs> Otherwise, we end up with uh, people that are very surprised to suddenly be on the phone with a hundred other folks. Um, I think this question's for Greg. Is North House taking steps to connect with a more diverse audience? Uh, how can I be involved? Uh, how is North House moving this forward? Yeah, great, great question. And again, this is, um, you know, a, a really important example of how North House is working hard, like a lot of institutions in this world, to move forward in meaningful ways. Um, North House has done a, several different things this past year as part of outreach and uh, working on diversity, equity, and inclusion. One, on the board level and staff level, we've launched a new DEI working group, and that group's been now active for more than, boy, I think I want to say nine months, and is um, reporting regularly to the board. Um, has a number of instructors as well as community members on it. And we're actively shaping strategies, both for how we're gonna move forward internally as an organization, but the kind of partnerships we're gonna build uh, with other organizations to make sure that you know, we're collaborating in a way that makes a difference in the world. Two, um, we're also simplifying and advancing both our accessibility and our scholarship programs to make sure that people who wanna get their hands on traditional craft can. Uh, our scholarship program offers three different levels, a half scholarship, a full scholarship, and a full plus scholarship. Uh, for the first time ever, the, it, the scholarship program allows you to actually sign up and, and make a request for a scholarship online. Again, brand new. And our, our, um, our work study accessibility program has grown as well. And our goal is to have that offered actually in every season of the year. If you want to get involved, I think the simplest way is to give um, one of the lead staff a shout. Um, we need people who want to, you know, um, do everything from connect us to potential partners to share, uh, you know, people who have ideas they want to share to people who want to support initiatives like our scholarship and accessibility program by investing in those really critical efforts. So reach out to us. We would love, love, to, love to talk. Thanks, Greg. Um, I think another one is for Jessa. Could you talk a little bit more about summer programming this year? I plan to be on the shore this summer, but don't have time to fit in a three or four day class. 
Yeah, that is always the trick. So much to do, not enough time. Um, we are having public programs again this summer, so there will be wood-fired bread baking in the oven with our new uh, class of interns that has arrived. They are being schooled by Amy James this very week, um, and so they'll be ready to teach you how to make focaccia and carta de musica in the wood-fired bread oven. Those are on Thursdays and Fridays, and you can sign up for them in advance as well. We'll also be hosting campus tours on Saturdays at 2 p.m. So if you're in town, if you have friends in town and you wanna introduce them to the school, that's a great way to do it. Right now, our classrooms are still pretty much closed to public access out of respect for keeping contacts low. And so um, the best way to get access to the classrooms is to, be, is to join us um, at two on Saturdays. And then every Thursday through Sunday, we'll also have an instructor in residence on, on the commons demonstrating crafts as soon as um, we start that right around wooden boat show. So there'll always be something going on over the weekends um, to stop by and see what they're up to. Um, of course, the school store is open, our schooner Yordis will be sailing. And so there's lots of good reasons to, to visit us and say hello. Thanks, Jessica. And I think another one for you, uh, you know, besides money and donations, are there other ways to support North House and what volunteer opportunities are there on the horizon? Yeah, great question. Um, there are lots of different ways to support North House. Certainly, um, we love to meet people. So uh, stopping by campus and introducing uh, your friends to us is a great way. Um, when the new courses go live, which happens for all of you on Thursday, June 3rd, and for everybody else on Friday, June 4th, forward that email and let people know about us. Um, we're always looking to meet new people. So that's a great way to support us. Um, we have the Wooden Boat Show coming up, which has volunteer opportunities. There's still, um, still a few open slots. So if you're gonna be on campus or in town um, in towards, let's see, June 17, 18, 19. And I think even a few days before that, there's opportunities to help us set up. Um, there will be volunteers at our Unplugged event in the fall. And um, yeah, I, and then as well as winter is gathering, a lot of our uh, volunteer opportunities are centered around those special events. And there's always Wednesday work study. You can just drop in and volunteer too and help us get campus transformed and set up for the next week. That meets at noon, Matt, 12.30. Am I getting that? I can't remember. Yep, on Wednesdays, you don't have to sign up. You just show, one o'clock, you just show up on campus Bring your work gloves and we'll find a job for you because uh, there's a lot, many hands make light work and there's a lot of work that has to happen to reinvent campus every week. Uh, so those are, come to mind. Am I missing anything, Greg? You did a great job as usual, Jessa. I was just going to add one. If you're curious about participating in leadership at North House, either through serving on the board or volunteering for committees, uh, since Greg can't kick me under the table on Zoom, I'm going to go ahead and share his email. Uh, but you can go ahead and reach out to Greg Wright, G Wright at NorthHouse.org. And that's a way, great way um, for people to step up and get more involved in the school as well. Oh, um, we're having an auction too. I forgot that one. The Boats to Tools auction, a classic, is going to be part of Wooden Boat Show um, and available online. So if you're interested, uh, that'll be fun to check out. Great. And then I think there's one more question. Um, let's see. Um, sorry, just getting through the list here. Um, Jessa, we had a few more questions come in about the future of paid and public online programming. You talked a little bit about it in your updates. Do you know when we might hear more about that or what folks might be able to expect? Yes, the most immediate future of our online programming is this Thursday evening when the Wooden Boat Show Speaker Series launches, um, followed by a lunch and learn on Friday. So those will be really fun. Those will be happening all week. All of our summer online coursework offerings are available um, and you can sign up for pretty much um, all of them right now. We anticipate that um, we'll be adding additional fall uh, offerings probably about mid-summer, so July, early August. 
we have a suspicion, I have a suspicion, I should say that people's interest in spending time um, learning online is going to increase uh, in um, sort of an opposite relationship with the darkness and the light. So as it gets lighter, our desire to sit in front of the computer decreases. And I think right around October or so, that online coursework is going to be available um, in, in greater numbers for folks to be able to plug in throughout the fall and winter months. So look for registration for those programs, the, the tuition-based programs in July, late July and early August. Great, and I'll take the last question we have from Paul asking, many colleges are requiring proof of vaccinations. Uh, what about North House? Our current policy for, um, our current COVID policies are adapting along with the state of Minnesota's MDH recommendations and with the CDC. Um, you know, there's a full description on the website and I'll share the link here in just a moment. Um, but we can kind of boil it down to kind of four phrases. Number one, masks are really appreciated. Um, it's still kind of weird coming out of COVID uh, when you haven't seen any stranger spaces for 14 months and all of a sudden you're in a room with nine other people that you haven't met before and you're spending three days together. And so for people who want to wear a mask, we're encouraging them to wear a mask. We're reminding people that the CDC and MDH still strongly recommends that people who are unvaccinated wear masks. And one of the things staff are doing is often wearing masks in the classroom as well as a way of making that feel really comfortable for people who do feel that that's the right choice for them. We're also asking all students to continue bringing masks with them so they can be respectful of students who wanna be masked and saying, you know, at the core of this, it's about respect. If you're going over to someone else's table and they're wearing a mask, you should put one on too, because that's just what community is about. Uh, the next phrase is social distancing encouraged. North House classrooms are gonna continue being set up in a way so that each person has their own space to work in. Instructors are reminded not to get too close, even when they have a really good story to tell. And um, we're continuing to keep class sizes somewhat limited. Vaccines are strongly recommended. Um, that's not the same as requiring them, uh, but Cook County has worked really hard during the pandemic and is among the most vaccinated counties in the country. You know, this is a place where people really are encouraging vaccination to move forward. And as an organization that values community, we hope everyone will consider whether getting a vaccine before coming to campus is something they can do to help be part of the community. This helps us care for each other and especially our neighbors who aren't able to get vaccinated. Um, there's a lot of folks on staff with younger kids. We're all still waiting for those vaccinations to come forward. And so that leads to the final point, youth safety is being prioritized. Um, for all youth classes, we are requiring everyone to wear a mask regardless of vaccination status so that kids can focus on their craft and not have to worry about whether or not someone in the room is vaccinated or unvaccinated. It just takes the question off the table. So that's what we're doing around that. And that's a great, uh, great question, Paul. Um, with that, Greg, I think we're turning it back over to you. Uh, absolutely. Wow. Well, um, you no, know, I want to just close by saying thanks again to everybody for being part of North House. Um, you know, we're 24 years old now. Um, um, you know, and there was a time I remember when we were seven, when um, a guy named Ken Bjork, who was at the time, Tina, the treasurer, um, he got up at the annual meeting and he, he got done with his report. And I want to close just by sharing this thought. Um, I'll see you next year. And I think I actually mean that. You know, and when your treasurer says that, that's big news. Well, what I wanna say is um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all next year and next week and next month. You know, the coffee pot's gonna be on because, um, because having people on campus is what this school is about. And there's not a question now about whether we're gonna be here. We are. You know, we're moving forward. We've got important, important work to do. And why? Because, because people believe in us. Why? Because people will help lower their shoulders, got involved as volunteers, as donors, as instructors, as students. So thank you for that. Um, I want to just, you know, I want to thank the current board, uh, your leadership, 
during these challenging times been key to have a brain trust who you can go, oh my gosh, what do we do now? And you know, sit down and be able to look at each other and talk turkey, that's big. Um, you know, to, to the North House staff, um, I just wanna say thank you. Um, you've been an inspiration. How do you bring the mission of a school to life in the middle of uncertainty? Well, this team figured it out and um, it's been joy. And then I wanna say again, thank you to all of you. Um, five people I wanna say thank you to, outgoing board members, Nancy Burns, Andrew Holden, Mark Glasnap, Mary Morrison, Paul Eslanian, um, again, key and, and the incoming and renewing board members, thank you for your leadership. So bottom line, thank you. I hope we'll see you by the coffee pot. Let me know if you'd like to get together. I'm always willing. Um, at some of our celebrations, the Wooden Boat Show just around the corner and this fall unplugged and way out there, winter is gathering. I, I think it's safe to say these things are gonna happen and we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much for being part of the annual meeting. Have a good night, everybody. On behalf of everybody, again, thanks for being part of North House. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot.